Pipewire continues making strides, and for regular Linux users, it provides basically a seamless experience for swapping between the various audio systems we use on Linux. And on my personal system, it has been basically fantastic. Sure, there has been a couple of minor hiccups along the way, but a lot of those are slowly being addressed. Granted, I don't use every single aspect of Pipewire, so there may be some parts that I'm not, you know, as well informed about as I would like to be. And as it continues to get better and better, more and more distros are starting to swap to it as their default. And it looks like in maybe three to five or so years, the era of Pulse Audio is finally coming to an end. I've personally never really had that many issues with Pulse Audio, some minor things along the way, but my main concern is all of the people who just love to complain about Pulse Audio. And seeing that finally stop is going to be great. But I'm sure they're going to find something else to complain about. I've already seen people complaining about the fact that Pipewire is made by Red Hat. But those people are always going to complain. And while people are complaining about Lib Ad Wager and whether it's going to destroy the entire world and various other GNOME changes going on, Ubuntu is the next distro on the chopping block. So I believe it was back in 21.04, Ubuntu started off a Wayland as one of its defaults. And to make sure you could do things like screen sharing and screenshotting outside of the GNOME utilities, it started to offer Pipewire to do the video stuff especially for tools like OBS, Discord, Zoom, and things like that. But for all of those people using the Xorg side, which I imagine most people probably still were, Pipewire wasn't being used because you don't need Pipewire to do video on Xorg because it has a video API. But as of Ubuntu 22.10 Kinetic Kudu, Ubuntu is going to be fully embracing Pipewire for its audio stack as well. For anyone curious, this right here is a Kudu. It's like an antelope sort of thing with twisty horns. Anyway, that's not too important. If you want to go and test it out right now, you can actually go and download the daily build. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And if we go and run PACTL info, this is going to say that Pipewire is running as our Pulse Audio server, which means that everything's working like it should be. So specifically what is changing is in this update right here. Firstly, a couple of packages are going to be dropped. The Pulse Audio package and the GStream Pulse Audio package are going to be removed from desktop and desktop minimal. So inside of the Ubuntu installer, you'll know how there's a section where you can say, do a full Ubuntu installation or do a minimal Ubuntu installation. So regardless of which one you actually choose, these packages are going to be removed. So the Pulse Audio package is your main Pulse Audio server. It includes some Pulse Audio tooling as well, but basically everything you need to make Pulse Audio work. And then GStreamer Pulse Audio is a plugin for GStreamer to let that hook into Pulse Audio. I've done some digging around and I have no idea why that GStreamer plugin was even installed. I have no idea what used it. If anyone happens to know, I would love to know. Also, the Pulse Audio module Bluetooth is being dropped from Desktop Minimal Recommends and Desktop Recommends. Likewise, with the desktop and desktop minimal, these are related to those installations, but these are optional packages you might want to add. So, as you can probably tell from the name, this is to allow Pulse Audio to, you know, work with Bluetooth. And to replace those first two packages, Pipewire Pulse is being added to desktop and desktop minimal. So Pipewire Pulse is basically a new Pulse Audio server, but a Pulse Audio server being managed by Pipewire. That's why when we go and run PACTL info, it still works. It still says Pulse Audio is running, but it's not the regular Pulse Audio we'd normally see. I feel like they should probably also add, I don't know what it's called in Ubuntu, but on Arch it is called GST Plugin Pipewire, which is the GStreamer plugin, but for Pipewire instead. Also, I would like to see Pipewire Jack, which is allowing Pipewire to manage Jack, but I totally get that most users out there probably are not using the professional level audio. And then finally, Libspar Bluetooth is being added to Desktop Minimal and Desktop Minimal Recommends. And as that name would suggest, it allows Pipewire to actually do anything with Bluetooth devices. So one component not being accounted for is the Pipewire Session Manager. So like with Jack, 
out of the box, Pipewire has no way to make sure that audio streams and audio devices are being connected. So let's say I want to start playing some music. If I'm doing that with Pulse Audio, it'll automatically send it to my headphones. Pipewire has no idea what to do with that, it'll just sit there. So the session manager is basically an external daemon that manages all of that routing. It being external means you can go and pick a new one, and that's what I've done on my system. So over on Ubuntu though, they are using one called Pipewire Media Session. This is basically to Pipewire what Western is to Wayland. It is the reference implementation that certainly does the job, but it's not really recommended to use. What I hope they do is instead switch to something known as Wire Plumber. This is a much more powerful session manager that supports this Lua plugin framework where I can do things like disable certain outputs and rename outputs and things of that nature. Basically, it gives you a lot more control. Right now, if you happen to be using 22.04, you can make all of these changes yourself, even doing what I would do in installing Wire Plumber. This is just from packages available in the standard repos, no need to go and compile anything extra. But while there may be a lot of exceptions to this, many people using Ubuntu probably are not going to make those changes themselves. So if you want people to actually be using Pipewire, you sort of have to make it the default. Also, it's very important to note that 22.10, as the 10 would imply, is still a couple of months away. So, it being available inside of the ISO right now doesn't mean that it's going to be there when 22.10 actually launches. Right now, we are still very much in the testing phase, and maybe something's going to happen where it needs to be removed. But it being here right now does give me really, really high hopes that it'll be in the final build. Even though I don't daily drive Ubuntu myself, I am still really excited for this change because this is going to affect me because it's going to massively affect Pipewire. What we're going to start seeing is now there is this massive influx of users, a lot more apps like, say, EasyFX, which have already done so, are going to start slowly adopting Pipewire as the native way to do audio. So the main way the audio is being done with Pipewire is through Pipewire Pulse. So we've got these like extra layers here that don't necessarily need to be there. They are just there for compatibility. Also, what we're going to see is a lot of the tooling like, say, Helvum and QPW Graph, which allow you to, like, reconnect audio channels, they're going to start improving a lot as well because a lot of people are now going to be reporting a lot more bugs. And speaking of bug reports, Pipewire is by no means perfect. It still has some problems like Bluetooth apparently is still a little bit sketch. I don't use Bluetooth headphones for a good reason. Wires are perfectly fine. But sometimes when my computer hibernates, random things in pipe wire just don't reconnect like my microphone. I don't know why. It was supposedly already fixed, but I'm still experiencing the problem. And things like that can be identified and then slowly addressed. And pipe wire is going to get much, much better. The only really sad part about this change is when it's happening, the fact that it's happening now and not a couple of months ago when the last LTS came out. So if you happen to be an LTS user, which I know a lot of people who use Ubuntu are, you're probably not going to see default pipe wire for a very, very long time. Now, these changes could possibly be backported in the next point release of 22.04, but if that doesn't happen, then you're probably going to wait for 24.04 unless the release cycle at some point changes. Also, I should make it very clear, the packages to install Pulse Audio are not being removed from Ubuntu. They are just being removed from the defaults. So if you really don't like Pipewire and you want to go back to Pulse, that option is totally available. So let me know what you think. Do you think this is a good change? Is this going to make you want to use 22.10? Or do you really not like Pipewire and you don't want to have to go through the hassle of reinstalling Pulse? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Stanley Barapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.